We're tracking the investigation into a deadly movie theater shooting. We'll tell you what we've learned about the gunman. Men and women rally in support of keeping the Jefferson Davis statue inside the Capitol. A man trying to help a friend raise a trailer is electrocuted in Clay County. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. We're starting to learn more about a man who opened fire in a movie theater. Two people died in the attack in Lafayette, Louisiana last night. The gunman injured nine others before taking his own life. Kenneth Craig is tracking the investigation in our top story at five. Investigators spent hours Friday combing through the movie theater in Lafayette, Louisiana, where a man opened fire Thursday night. They are being deliberately slow and methodical. Police found 13 shell casings in the theater. The bullets hit and killed two women, 21-year-old Macy Bro and 33-year-old Jillian Johnson. Bro was about to begin radiology school at the same hospital that treated some of the victims. And just two weeks ago, uh, toured the facility and met many of our staff, and so it, this uh, really uh, it hurts. So far, police have not determined what may have motivated the gunman, identified as 59 year old John Russell Hauser. Court documents show Hauser's family said he was mentally ill and that he had threatened them. We believe in talking to the family, talking to the friends, trying to look at his writings uh, on the internet and putting some. Uh, parts and pieces together, maybe we can try to figure out what caused them to do it. Police say they've received some promising leads after releasing the gunman's name. They're now following up on calls from people who say they've had recent interactions with Hauser. Four on-duty police officers were inside the theater within 60 seconds of the shooting. Hauser spotted police on his way out as he tried to escape. He then turned back inside and shot himself. Police found disguises in the Lafayette motel room where they say he had been staying. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Lafayette, Louisiana. Investigators say the brand of handgun used in the shootings is hard to trace. They're still working on figuring out where it actually came from. They think a statue of a Confederate leader should remain on display. Today, about 100 people rallied to keep a statue of Jefferson Davis at the Kentucky State Capitol. And while many were Kentuckians, others came from out of state to show their support. Our Kristen Kennedy shows us why they believe there's still a place for that statue in the Capitol building. A hundred people waved Confederate flags Friday on the steps of the Capitol. They shouted their support for keeping the Jefferson Davis statue prominently displayed in the rotunda. Last month's mass shooting inside an African Methodist Episcopal Church has prompted many local and national leaders to question Civil War statues and markers. To blame that flag. Those monuments, those statues, and even the sacred grounds of our forefathers is in itself insanity. The reason for the rally is the possible removal of the Jefferson Davis statue. If leaders were to remove it, it would be a pretty tough task. That statue weighs between 12 and 14 tons. It needs to stay right in there because he was a great Kentuckian. He was a great Kentuckian. This is where uh, people can come for free and, and learn the history. Sonia Ward drove with friends from Ohio to participate in Kentucky's rally. It's important to preserve the ancestry and the, and the history and not to change the history. All we want to do is celebrate our heritage and our ancestry. That's all we want to do. And as Jefferson Davis said, we just want to be left alone. The Historic Properties Commission is taking all opinions into consideration. They're inviting everyone to write or email them ahead of their meeting next month. In Frankfurt, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. The Historic Properties Commission will accept written statements through July 29th. Their next meeting discussing the future of the Jefferson Davis statue is August 5th. A man has been killed while trying to help a friend repair flood damage. Dwayne Brewster was electrocuted in an accident on Bells Fork Road in Clay County. WKYT's Phil Pendleton talked to the coroner who calls this a very unusual incident. This happened about 4.30 on Thursday afternoon in the Lockard Creek community of Clay County. I am told by the homeowner that Dwayne Brewster was helping her raise her trailer when he was electrocuted. 
The trailer had been damaged in a recent flood, and the homeowner says she called on her friend, Dwayne Brewster, to help her relevel it and get it back on the foundation. The area was very wet, mud and water were beneath the trailer. The homeowner told coroner Danny Finley that Brewster was under it and the home was raised with jacks about eight inches. Finley says he was told the electrical wiring that goes to the junction box was damaged during the work. The short occurred whenever they raised that up, putting pressure on the wiring. Uh, the wiring was underground, so uh, raising that up kind of uh, constricted it. Now, the coroner tells me that in his more than 20 years of working for the coroner's office, both as a coroner and a deputy coroner, he has never worked any case like this one. And much more at 6 o'clock, but for now, in Clay County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. State police were also called to investigate, but police say more than likely it will be ruled an accident. A man is dead after falling into a pond. Our county by county coverage begins in Spencer County. State police say that first responders found 41 year old Michael Mahern unresponsive in the pond about 6 30 last night. He died at the scene. Police do not suspect foul play. In Whitley County, we're tracking the search for a man suspected in a violent shoplifting incident. Corbin police want to find Anthony Sizemore. Police say he tried to steal from a Belk store last Friday. The News Journal reports he scuffled with loss prevention, pushed down an elderly woman while trying to get away, and pulled a gun on a customer who followed him into the parking lot. Sizemore faces robbery, assault, and wanton endangerment charges. A scam alert today in Morgan County. West Liberty Police say that someone is using their name to trick people out of their hard-earned money. It starts with an email where scammers try to get your phone number. The scammer then calls you, claiming to be a West Liberty police officer, and threatens to arrest you if you don't pay a debt you owe. Police do not collect debts. If you receive the email, don't give any personal information and report it to state police. We have a traffic alert for New Circle Road. The outer loop and the ramp to the outer loop at Leestown Road will be closed starting at 8 tonight. Workers need to close the road to do milling and paving work. The road is expected to reopen at 10 Sunday morning. We are ending the week with some great weather. The weekend is shaping up to be really nice as well. WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is here now with an early check of your forecast. Hi, Chris. Hi, Amber. Yeah, you said it best. Absolutely picture perfect again out there this afternoon. If anything, in some cases this afternoon, temperatures are a little cooler than yesterday's very nice weather. A little look outside in Lexington. Green, lush vegetation, wet ground, blue skies over top of us. Boy, oh boy, it is a picture perfect day, and that wet ground doing a number on temperatures. It's only 84 degrees in Lexington. Our normal highs right now are into the upper 80s, so it's another day coming in cooler than it should be. Northwesterly winds at around six miles an hour. Basically, not a whole lot of humidity to talk about at all at only 47%. We take you through the evening and into the overnight hours. Temperature wise, uh, at 11 o'clock, we're into the low 70s. Quick drop into the low 60s. First thing tomorrow morning for the rest of your day, upper 70s to around 80 at noontime. And by the time we hit tomorrow afternoon, not too dissimilar from where we are today. A lot of mid and upper 80s that will be showing up across the entire area. And we have even better news. It continues to remain on the dry side. Not only this evening, but that's a trend that should carry us right on into tonight and through most of the day tomorrow. Typical summertime temperatures this weekend. I can't really call it hot when it's normal. Isolated thunderstorm chance will be with us this week, though. Next week, guys, we've got some bigger changes that show up, and that may mean some more storms in your seven day forecast. Just a few minutes from now. We'll see you then, Chris. Thank you. UK fans packed a downtown Lexington hotel this afternoon for a chance to hear from football head coach Mark Stoops. And he talked about what he wants from his team this season. Rob, sounds exciting. Well, it's always a sign that the uh, start of a new season is getting closer and closer. The annual kickoff luncheon at noon at the Hyatt Regency. And I'll tell you, the ballroom packed with UK fans, big crowd. Stoops was joined by his coordinator, his offensive coordinator, Shannon Dawson, defensive coordinator, DJ Elliott, and recruiting coordinator, Vince Marrow. Stoops wants his players to play with passion, and from what he hears, they do. I, I tell you, that's the biggest compliment I get as we go. Uh, to these national uh, media days and things like that is about when people talk about your team plays with heart, they play with passion. You know, for the most part, we've done that. We have not been perfect. 
there are some games uh, that, that obviously I haven't been very proud of, but I've been proud of their effort for the most part. They've bought in everything we're selling. They're working extremely hard. Everybody's all in, and you're going to see a passionate, fun, exciting group uh, come this fall. I promise you that. And one week from today, Stoops and his coordinators will be over in Louisville. They will speak there to the Jefferson County Alumni Club. Rob, thank you. And the UK Women's Clinic is scheduled for tomorrow. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Two inspector generals have asked the U.S. Justice Department to investigate the Hillary Clinton email scandal. The IGs are concerned sensitive or classified emails were mishandled when they were released. The Department of Justice hasn't determined whether or not it will investigate. It is a new vaccine that could save a lot of lives. European regulators have given the green light to the world's first vaccine against malaria. Now, while it's worked about 30% of the time, its protection does fade over time. Experts say it is a good first step. More than a half million people die every year from the mosquito-borne disease, most of them children in Africa. The Food and Drug Administration is recommending another change to nutrition labels. The FDA wants labels to include the percentage showing how much of your recommended daily intake of added sugar each serving has. Labels already include percent of daily values for other nu nutrients, but not sugar. Well, if you picked up a copy of this month's Women's Health Magazine, mm -hmm. Amber just happened to have it, you'll see something interesting on the cover. Yeah, on it is a Lexington fitness instructor looking to be the next fitness star. Her story is new at five. When it comes to fitness, there isn't a lot this 29-year-old won't try. You might look a little silly, but that's okay. Certified in nearly a dozen different fitness classes, you could say Jana Hare is a gym junkie. I always just had extra energy, as my mom would say. She always said, I need to go exhaust my energy. <laughs> so After finishing her collegiate dance career, Hare found her way into a gym and was persuaded to teach group fitness. So jab, cross, hook, cross. Hesitant at first, bring that fire, baby. Yes, ma'am. She soon found her passion was inspiring others. I'm here for you. You know, I'm not here just to be standing up front. I'm here to make sure you're engaging, you're using your 60 minutes or whatever you're giving me that day to the fullest extent. Her love of the gym and encouraging a healthy lifestyle Good, I got you, sis. Come on. has her competing for the title of the next fitness star, landing this Lexington gal's face on the front of Women's Health Magazine. It's unreal. Um, and it's very surreal, but it's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's a dream. Earlier this year, Hare submitted a three-minute video to the contest sponsored by the magazine and was named one of five finalists out of thousands of applicants. The whole contest is basically they're looking for who's going to elevate, who's going to inspire um, the masses. Hare won't know for a few more weeks if she will hold the title, but until then, fitness star or not, her mission is the same. Come on, breathe, baby, breathe, let's work. Leading her clients to the healthiest and best version of themselves. It is about across the board being better for your kids, being better for your family, being better for your job, being better for life in general. Now, if Jana wins, she will get her own Women's Health Workout DVD contract. And you can help Jana Hare by voting online. We have a link to the site with this story on WKYT.com. We also have a list of places where you can take a class from Hare if you like. So good luck to her. It is time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Fiat Chrysler is recalling nearly one and a half million vehicles. It's in response to a story that we brought you earlier this week about hackers taking control of a Jeep over the Internet. The company plans to update software in the vehicles to prevent hacking. We have a list of the affected models. Just go to the Better Living section of WKYT.com. Well, they help us hear the world around us, so it is important to keep your ears in tip-top shape. Jim Morelli shows us the best way to get them clean and keep them healthy. It is a marvel of anatomical engineering, the human ear, which converts sound waves into something you can understand. And just like any other system in the body, there are ways to keep the ears healthy. Well, most ears are self-cleaning. Dr. Stephen Rausch practices otology at the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Infirmary in Boston. 
He says cellular debris actually moves on its own from the inner ear to the outer with the help of earwax, which is why these cotton swabs are pretty much public enemy number one when it comes to keeping the ears healthy. When you put one in, you plow the earwax down the canal uh, a little bit like muzzle loading a cannon. Still, there are some situations in which the ears do need to be cleaned out. Diet, age, and climate can all play a role in making earwax too sticky to leave the ear on its own. If the wax buildup is substantial enough, it blocks the canal and you can't hear. Speaking of damage to the ears, the potential for it is all around us. Simply put, loud noise is toxic to hearing. Hearing experts recommend limiting exposure to loud noise and or muffling that exposure by wearing decibel reducing headphones. Once you've done that kind of hearing damage, it's irreversible. In Boston, Jim Morelli. If you are concerned about hearing loss, there is an at home test you can do. Simply hum. If you hear the sound louder in your bad ear, it's probably due to a blockage. If you hear it louder in your good ear, the problem might be more serious. An iconic shoe is getting an update. On July 28th, Converse will release the Converse Chuck 2. The new version will have an arch support, cushioned soles, and a breathable lining. High tops will run you about $75, while the low-cut pair will be $70. Bucks.